a good evening to all of you uh, it is indeed a pleasure and privilege to be associated with the conference the first of its kind the first virtual uh, seminar on reinventing excellence in librarianship um, i'm grateful to professor konnu and the organizing committee university of hyderabad for extending this invitation and the theme though initially i thought the theme has to do more with the public libraries but nevertheless um, this is a topic which embraces all kinds of uh, libraries in this the plenary session we have speakers plenary speakers um first uh, let me introduce them dr s k savanur he is former faculty uh, department of library and information science from joshi bedekar college thane he will be speaking about library diplomacy past present and the future we also have uh, dr g mahesh who is a principal scientist and editor csir nisker from delhi uh, he will be highlighting on what we can learn from science diplomacy it's a good perspective from science sciences and we have dr n c ghosh librarian um, iim kolkata uh, he will be speaking on collaboration uh, networking outreach and diplomacy in libraries so to correct he is from iim calcutta we have dr dilara begum associate professor from department of library uh, information studies and library management east west university um, aftab nagar dhaka from bangladesh she will be speaking on the essential uh, library diplomacy essential for 21st century and uh, last but not the least dr rajesh kumar sinha librarian of southeastern railways he will be speaking on library diplomacy so i extend a warm welcome to all the plenary speakers uh, we hope that this will be a very good session at the end of the session we will take up question and uh, question answers from uh, questions from the audience so uh, to introduce to the topic um, and as a theme of library diplomacy i'll just share my screen the theme of this session is library diplomacy it's about uh, the, the tools library being used as tools of diplomacy curating cultural heritage and past and future uh, uh, of library diplomacy the term library diplomacy attained significance or rather uh, we had it uh, its origin during the cold war era where the usa and uk used uh, it as conduits to further their uh, belief ideologies way of life uh, culture and they thought it's the right uh, perspective of life rather than others so diplomacy as uh, defined by the uh, palgrave macmillan dictionary of diplomacy is it is the conduct of relations between sovereign states through medium of officials based in home uh, and or abroad the latter being either members of the states diplomatic service or temporary diplomats so thus it includes actually stationing of representatives at the international nations and in in a very generic term it is defined as negotiation between two people often the representatives of the countries uh, with tact to promote their territorial integrity economy and uh, trade um, interest so it is very specifically used in the context of world peace world peace and international relations so there are variants and uh, objectives uh, you know of uh, ad adjectives added to the term to describe uh, the diplomacy which is often associated with an event or a tool that is used as a potent force for negotiating between nations you can see the appeasement or you see the dollar diplomacy the famous ping pong diplomacy the panda diplomacy and the public diplomacy i think the public diplomacy has uh, attained significance in us um, to involve citizens in improving relations between nations that means improving relations among people if there is a deadlock between nations i think what was included in the charter by the congress is involvement of public or citizens to you know uh, build um, uh, cultural diplomacy uh, or rather you know improve the relations between the nations so Uh, cultural diplomacy is an offshoot of uh, public diplomacy and uh, and it is uh, the the use of libraries especially for 
extending diplomacy is um, um, is considered as a cultural uh, diplomacy. Uh, the public diplomacy as a process by which an interna international actor pursues the end of foreign policy by engaging the foreign public. So the, the keywords that you often see is associated as you know international relations or the public uh, relations or involvement of public. Uh, if you look at uh, the uh, definition given by Palgrave Macmillan Dictionary of Diplomacy, it says the exploitation of professional diplomats and foreign ministries of the rich opportunities of modern communication technology to engage a dialogue with foreign publics, albeit with a view of persuading them uh, more effectively to the point of view. So it, actually the term um, public uh, diplomacy is an euphemism which is considered as an euphemism for propaganda which uh, I mean the, if you use the word propaganda of course it will have some negative uh, connotations so pop, the cultural diplomacy or the public diplomacy is a synonym or a euphemism is more acceptable term which is used uh, to practice the public diplomacy so if you look at the mind map of public diplomacy you see the various actors the monitoring of uh, uh, the monitoring of the peace process involves both hard and uh, soft power but public dis diplomacy is considered mostly a soft power and it is often used when all your military in interventions are um, uh, you know uh, are exhausted or may not be considered as an alternate to uh, improve relations between nations so uh, the uh, the, for the public diplomacy has its actors both in, as diplomats, uh, you know, uh, in that in that rank, and there is a diplomatic machine, and uh, it is often monitored how often, uh, I mean, how the peace process is evolving with the involvement of uh, the public. Cultural diplomacy is an offshoot of public diplomacy. So the origins of library being used as, um, you know, uh, as a tool for public diplomacy may be rooted uh, during the uh, during the period between the wars uh, but then if, when we are using the uh, word culture it is a broad uh, sociological term and more often uh, you know, it is just more than the heritage sites or uh, or the art museums that we uh, you know the art that we find in museums it is also a way of life uh, a way of living a vibrant expression of people's way of life we must say the habits, the traditions, the patterns, and even the quirks and idiosyncrasies that define people who are completely different. The ultimate aim of such diversity or contrasting um, a way of life is convergence of obviously the peace. Uh, so uh, the internationalization of uh, libraries, uh, the international of libraries or attempted globalization, especially the spread of information and how it should be used. Uh, is um, rooted in the history of uh, library diplomacy. So the period between the Second World War and the, uh, and the way the libraries were seen uh, as a key for distributing information and culture across the globe during the Cold War era is definitely motivated by the foreign policy concerns and uh, probably the agenda in the foreign affairs. The post-war period is also critical to the development, uh, has been critical to the development of libraries with the areas of globe moving out uh, from, you know, um, colonial, uh, old imperialism to uh, becoming a new states. And the Western and the capitalist democracy often promoted libraries as essential, uh, you know, uh, for education and cultural uh, institutions. So libraries, uh, those days, I mean, before they were actively used as a diplomatic tool were uh, you know pushed to periphery uh, and often relegated to the margins of historical scholarship but uh, the establishment of um, uh, british and american libraries actually changed the library discourse by shaping their activities uh, and uh, and the way they have been spread across the uh, globe uh, is immense uh, until the, the 90s so the British Council libraries, I think they were all inspired by the Frankers. Um, uh, I mean, the, the, the libraries that were established by France or Spain uh, for promotion of uh, the, their language and culture in the colonies uh, where uh, they were ruling at once upon a time. And uh, it is 
uh, fairly understood as uh, British Council libraries were inspired by that, uh, you know, the establishment of those libraries. So it was created in 1943 uh, and maybe formally, uh, you know, established by Royal Charter in 1940. So most of the institutions which were created in the British uh, Council has created had, uh, you know, uh, uh, had a library or a reading room. Uh, which were not only aimed at promoting the British way of life, but also increase the interest in reading, which often the uh, colonial powers thought of being missing in the local population. So the book stock would always highlight the British literature, sciences and arts. And um, by the time of 1964, there were about 124 British Council libraries, 11 in India, 18 in Pakistan, 33 in Africa, 15 in China. So. Uh, from what they had in 1950, about 95 libraries. So basically, these were aimed at uh, promoting the British interest. And majority of the collection, you could see that uh, they were uh, clearly British published and uh, serving the interest of uh, Britain, British uh, foreign policy. The same is with the statecraft of um, USA. Uh, I think the, uh, the president of uh, USA at that time Ralph Alvin was uh, actively supporting the U.S. State Department for uh, using the libraries as, you know, promoting the establishment of libraries in the uh, countries where uh, they had uh, strongly supported during the Second World War. Uh, and uh, uh, he often, you know, used the term as, uh, you know, libraries and buttresses of foreign uh, friendly diplomacy. So the same is the case. There were about 176 U.S.I.S. libraries in 80 countries and only 20% of them had the local collection among the 30 lakh collection that were published. So as uh, I think unlike the British libraries, the, the US libraries became a symbol of power and often became a target of anti-American protests. There were about 68 uh, attacks on US libraries between 1945 to 65 from partial damage to complete destruction. I think the libraries, uh, especially established by US, uh, USA and UK in Africa had resistance because they were often seen uh, as uh, subtle agencies of uh, imperialism still uh, you know, prevalent or the legacy of imperialism is carrying forward because of the, the promotion of the British or US literature completely ignoring uh, the local, you know, uh, the local um, uh, culture which is uh, in an unwritten form, is it often in oral form. Uh, so on the other side of uh, Cold War, this had to happen. And uh, the growing collection of Russian language literature in establishment of Peking University Library and National Library of China is a testimony to this China's uh, political uh, clear political alignment. And it consistently blocked the equal access to English and other foreign language material. But over a period of time, I think some developing countries were uh, in this region of South Asia were resisting the establishment of libraries uh, and um, also the absence of the local literature, especially uh, you know in colonies where British uh, uh, British uh, Great Britain had ruled. Uh, given all that, I think the contribution of uh, British and American libraries cannot be disregarded in uh, promoting. The, um, the reading habits or the creating the uh, modern information infrastructure uh, that was necessary for imparting education and uh, you know promotion of uh, and promoting libraries as cultural institutions given the background that they were pushed to periphery and were seen only as you know a historical scholarship so the american and uh, british libraries uh, were instrumental in changing the library discourse uh, by shaping their activities and uh, <clears throat> this was specifically used uh, uh, i think they, they they were meant to use for promoting uh, world peace and the international relations so uh, after uh, i think in uh, amo along the side parallelly um, apart from usa and uh, british libraries there were uh, organizations associations maybe at individual levels where which have also initiated similar programs uh, for uh, exchange of library professionals across uh, nations. <coughs> uh, the UNESCO public, uh, uh, the UNESCO's public uh, 
Library Manifesto, which was promulgated in 1949 with an assertion that uh, uh, public library is a living force for pop popular education and for the growth of international understanding and promotion of space. In the post-war era, it was an important entity that actually shaped the post-war library discourse. Uh, the IFLA, during its foundation year, also tied up with UNESCO and uh, signed an agreement of mutual recognition to focus, uh, uh, focus on promoting libraries in the developing world. I think the Delhi Public Library is one of the uh, libraries which was established based on the UNESCO's uh, Public Library Manifesto. Uh, the, the role of ALA uh, also uh, was very significant, not only for its alignment with the Department of State in establishing the USIS libraries, but also uh, uh, during the 50s, where during the late 60s, when the Sino-US relations were not uh, uh, not that good, and ALA was instrumental in selecting um, the books for Chinese kids under the campaign. Uh, um, uh, books for kids of China. British Library Association also promoted the work of uh, UNESCO and it also encouraged the librarians to uh, join its uh, projects. So the role of this organization and association cannot be negated though uh, in this part of the world, the, uh, the establishment of USIS libraries and British libraries were more prominent um, uh, than the efforts of the in, in organizations such as IFLA and uh, UNESCO. There were also exchange programs, I think, uh, uh, which were initiated by universities, like the Illinois Library Association uh, initiated an exchange of uh, library professionals, um, and more and more state library associations joined the effort. And we have seen many of the Indian librarians uh, visiting US those days like Sam Sundarlal from Punjab University, Shiv Narayan Math of Rajasthan University, uh, Desraj Kalra, Swarna Kumari, and Professor P. N. Kala, they were all actually part of that exchange process who traveled to US uh, and UK uh, to gather information about how libraries are run and what collection they have, including sharing of uh, the process procedures. And the most important uh, aspect that is still on record uh, is a study tour or undertaken by Professor Ranganathan in, in British Library. So he gave, it seems, uh, 50 hours of uh, lecture and 20 hours of discussion with British libraries, which were published in paper, a library association record. Professor, uh, I think, R.S. Goel also uh, visited the rural libraries in UK and submitted a report. So. Ranganathan during his interaction as clearly though it was uh, more mostly aimed at uh, global librarians but at that time uh, he saw the that Indian libraries were on par with the uh, UK libraries there was also initiative of P of libraries involvement in the peace of corps but uh, um, uh, the idea was actually to involve young people in assisting in the development of infra infrastructure for these institutions. The contemporary scenario is much more um, barrier-free and uh, the advent of inter internet and uh, communication technologies, the fellowships that are extended at the Fulbright, though it's used for the library professionals, the common men fellows or the IFLA young librarians programs, a number of opportunities are facilitated by the national agencies such as UGC, MHRD and uh, Department of Science and Technology, where still the exchange of libraries in the contemporary world going on. And the research has no geographical barriers. I think uh, it has opened up the technology and the much peaceful world has opened up uh, more uh, avenues for uh, accelerating the much needed cross-border collaborations to understand the users, the demography, the best practices in professions. And the, we also witnessing conferences that are co-hosted and providing a platform for interaction between librarians of different uh, nations. And uh, there are universities uh, in, of course, UK, uh, Europe and USA, there has been efforts to build rare and special collections, curating the culture and inviting scholars of repute to do research. I think that this is somewhere the academic libraries in US are all, already doing it and it is time for us that we should not relegate uh, 
the curation of uh, culture or creating of special collections confined to public libraries are, um, or museum libraries, but they could be still a part of the academic libraries. I think uh, I also got an opportunity to uh, collaborate with California University to understand uh, research ethics, whether culture plays a role. Since a lot of uh, students from, uh, uh, from this part of the world uh, seek admissions in top uh, US schools and how whether the culture has any influence on their understanding or the way they conduct research or uh, what barriers they face being influenced by culture and uh, this will actually help a lot to understand um, and develop uh, more outreach programs to uh, those students who are sometimes uh, are constrained by not only the uh, the curriculum or the new curriculum that they uh, the new curriculum or the pedagogy that they embrace but also on uh, the research ethics which is very crucial um, which is taken very seriously in universities abroad so i think that i have i am not part of any program but still the connectivity the, the way you do research uh, or the the expertise are clearly visible in form of social in social media or any other platform or the LinkedIn the LinkedIn profiles where you get to collaborate much easily among uh, you know your peers especially across the borders. So some thoughts to conclude this uh, session is uh, though the libraries uh, in the Cold War era were seen as promoting the uh, you know, it's often called promoting the cultural cold war or a, a, or a legacy of subtle cultural imperialism, but they must, uh, it must be acknowledged that they played a key role in the development of education and info, uh, information infrastructure in many nations. So uh, the library diplomacy, actually the, the objective of library diplomacy is to achieve globalization, which is seen as necessary to achieve networking of people and knowledge. So building libraries, training libraries, and creating collections continue to the way, continue to be the ways of uh, to achieve the globalization of uh, the libraries. I think times have changed, and the way we collaborate with each other, the way we are known to each other, the way we frequently visit each other libraries, have definitely transformed the libraries from the the so-called you know cultural imperialistic or in promoting imperialism rather than to diplomacy and the ultimate aim is, of course, congruence and world peace. Thank you very much for listening to me. And uh, we'll now invite the first speaker to speak on his topic. Thank you.